To my right is Bounty Law Series lead and Jake Cahill himself, Rick Dalton. And to my left is Rick's stunt double, Cliff Booth. So, Rick, uh, explain to the audience exactly what it is a stunt double does. Actors are required to do a, a lot of dangerous stuff. <laughs> Cliff here is meant to help carry the load. Is that uh, how you describe your job, Cliff? What, carrying his load? Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> are registered as lethal weapons. We get into a fight, I accidentally kill you, I go to jail. Anybody accidentally kills anybody in a fight, they go to jail. It's called manslaughter. the best acting I've ever seen in my whole life. Like you. Rick fucking no. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Academy Visiting Artists Film Series, Film Aid Edition for Casting Directors. I'm Bernie Telsey, Casting Director, and I'm here today with my good friend, fellow Casting Director, Vicki Thomas. How are you today, Vicki? Hi there. How are you, Bernie? I'm good. I feel like I wish I wasn't in New York so far away from you so we could do it in person. I know. Well, you know. How are you? How it is. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm looking forward to a very long long weekend so yes exactly weekend. yes exactly yeah. uh well we're here today to talk about what it is that you and i do every day yeah. <laughs> and for all these wonderful film students yeah. so i'd love to start with just saying how did you get into casting and then how did you transition into having your own business well i didn't get into casting via the usual route i never worked for anyone it was really just me working with a fellow film student at UCLA and they asked me to cast their student thesis film and I went, okay. Um, you know, we would always work on each other's films, whether we were, you know, making lunch for the crew or holding a boom mic or, you know, everybody just kind of pitched in and helped each other. And I think someone said, well, maybe Vicky should cast. And they, okay, they asked me and I said, okay, sure. And uh, that, student thesis film evolved during the course of a year and became a low budget independent movie called Repo Man. And they just kept me on when the film actually became like a legitimate <laughs> movie. And um, yeah, I just sort of got thrown into the deep end of the pool and uh, tried to learn what it meant to be a casting director or how you cast a film. So I didn't, I didn't have the privilege of really of working for, for someone uh, and sort of being taught the ropes and, you know, coming up through the ranks. Um, right. which I would have really enjoyed, you know, I just kind of, I got thrown in and I just had to learn how to swim. And then do you remember this sort of time when you woke up one day and said, oh, I'm going to do this for a living <laughs> and I'm going to do this for my profession? Yeah, it's funny because I did that and I went, oh, that's just sort of a one-off. And then I think I went and worked a couple other jobs or whatever. And then I came back and uh, the same producer of the film asked me to help him out in another movie. And then I got a call that didn't happen. Then I got a call from Ed Pressman's office, you know, someone who actually didn't know me, <laughs> you know, so a friend was giving me a job and they wanted to hire me to be their casting consultant. Went, okay. And to cast a movie with David Byrne. Uh, I went, okay. Oh, Oh, okay, sure. You know, and I went in my lead little meeting and made my little notes and had my little suggestions. And uh, yeah, I think after that, I went, oh, I guess I could put something in that occupation slot on whatever piece of paper you fill out. And it was right around then. I went, oh, I guess casting director. 
Right. That's yeah. great. Yeah. What do you love about casting and what are some of your guiding principles when you start casting a film? I think I love, I think like a lot of casting directors, I love working with the actors, just getting in a room and right. it's like, let's run the scene and, you know, let's uh, try, try something different. And I think just the actual process of auditioning actors, which has been uh, a little hampered by obviously the COVID times we're, we're living in, but that's really the best for me. And just seeing someone kind of flower you know, mm -hmm. the performance sort of come alive in an audition audition room. And look, I, I guess like all casting directors, you know, obviously want to cast, you know, the best, the perfect person for the part, um, you know, the best actor you can, and hopefully make some sort of surprising choice along the way and hopefully maybe break someone, you know? Um, yeah, that's the best. So yeah, that's really the, the exciting, uh, the exciting part of it. So yeah, I mean, do you have any principles? I mean, just in terms of, what do you... you know, I don't know. One of my biggest principles is just being nice and being, uh, you know, yeah. available to all of the different kinds of people that we work with, whether it be the actor or director, you know, there's such a personality business. Yes. And yes. Learning how to be that host, so to speak of like, you know, how to engage with each person, whether we agree or don't agree. Yeah. And everybody's got a different yeah, so there are a lot of different personalities, and uh, yes, it's it's like surfing. It's like sort of yeah. like you know, because you yeah, there's never one one experience or one right one type of you know personality or one you know. This just they're they're all different, so you kind of have to be able to adjust. Can you share a little bit about it's day one and you're about to work on this new movie and you've read it? Yeah. What are those? early first conversations like with you and a director? Well, usually I, I, I like to have conversations where it's not just about the casting, it's sort of the overall feel of the movie, the overall story, um, just sort of what we're trying to achieve and how casting yeah. can help that. Um, so I think it helps to be brought along um, as a casting director, and in, into in the, the filmmaking process, and, you know, just as a, as a fellow filmmaker, because we're all hopefully trying to go for the same goal. And, and uh, yeah, I just think a, a sense of the overall picture, you know? Um, and yeah, and then you obviously you get into, you know, the casting, you get into characters, you get into, I like conversations where there's sort of, well, who would this character have been in the 50s? You know, what actor would have played this role? you know, if we were casting this in the 50s or the 60s, yeah, yeah, I like that something too. like that, you know, because that actually kind of, uh, that surprisingly gives me a real good sense of, oh, it's okay, so let's. Uh... Well, it's a nice way to start because it takes you out of talking about someone in the moment, you know what I mean? It's like, yes. what, you know. Well, kind it of... kind of allows you to sort of, it, it helps in free associating, it helps in kind of getting out of a sort of a, right. uh, such a, uh, maybe a closed off sort of uh, uh, mentality about the current actors of today or right. whatever, you know? So it's just, it's just sort of freeing a little bit. Yeah. You know? And it's well, fun. You bring, yeah. You bring up a good point because so much of the relationship between a casting director and the director is the collaboration and the give and yeah. take, as yeah. you were saying, but what are some of the, what do you do when you do come up against that, yeah. you know, conversation about a present actor that you yeah. particularly might be passionate about mm -hmm. and the director he or she is not how do you help change a mind potentially or what do you do when you come across that stumbling block yeah you sort of maybe plant a seed <laughs> you know you put a picture over there and you know move it along you come back right. in a few days and go huh you know maybe that no, 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 we don't want that. Okay, okay, well, let's just go on and keep move. We'll keep reading people. And it just, this actually just happened recently. Um, no, definitely not. They're definitely not. Okay, well, let's just keep going. You know, let's keep reading people and try to find what you're really looking for or that fits your, you know, you keep going and you go, you know what, that guy, that actor, that, <laughs> well, can we want to look at him again? You know, so you just kind of plant a seed, sort of bring it back. Uh, and usually 
through the process of casting, something may open up for the director as well. If you sort of are going for something so specific that it's sort of, you're not quite finding it. And then you might find actually what you're looking for with an actor that you didn't expect to get that from. Um, actually, actually what you're talking about for this character, this actor actually brings to you in a slightly different way, but you know, that might work just as well, if not better. Right, right. Uh, do you find the conversations that are happening today based on the recent racial justice movement that we've all been part of in the last two years, yeah. have those conversations been easier, harder to have with creative team members about inclusion and belonging and diversity as far as where it relates to actors? Well, easier and harder because, look, yes, let's find roles for actors of all races. Let's like reflect a world as it exists. And if that happens to be a multiracial world, great. But also if it's like, you know, if we're doing a film about the Amish and then I don't really want to shoehorn an actor of color into necessarily a film about right. the right. Amish. And you have to be careful. Sometimes I, you know, I don't want to just, I want the best, best actor for the part. And I don't want tokenism. Um, so how do you, it's, 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 it's just, it can get a little tricky, the conversations where it's like, well, it has to be this, or it has to be that. And it starts to look like a, like sort of a Benetton ad or something that's just being put on, not in a natural organic right. way. So that's sometimes, those are tricky conversations because I think I find myself, uh, you know, sometimes as the only black woman in the room, you know, arguing for the white actor to play that particular part. Right, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it just, sure. well, I just think, well, that, it just seems to fit that role better and achieve what you're trying to achieve if that character is a white actor. You know what I'm saying? I know right. we're all trying to be inclusive, but just want to make sure it's not getting in the way of, what you're trying to do with the film or the television project, does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, I feel like, you know, for me, it, it's been a little, it's been enlightening and I don't want to say easier isn't the right word, but now I feel like on day one, the teams are are wanting us to lead those conversations. Oh. I mean, I know, I know you and I have been, you know, seeing diverse actors since the day we started in casting, because why wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, it was always better to play with a bigger crayon box of actors exactly. than a smaller. Exactly. But then the decision making is what always didn't happen until the end. And then it was too late to have those conversations about why can't it be? Yeah. And now I find like it's like the first day of school. I walk in and yes, let's talk about what this role is and what does it really mean and why can't it be or why can't it be? Yeah. And, and well, I, I find that I think these kind of conversations don't, aren't being led by us anymore. I think the conversations are being led by the studios, right. they're being led by some producers, they're, they're being led by the network or what, you know, there, it's like right. there's definitely been in the last, I don't know, Bernie, we think three, yeah. four years, to just, we don't have to like encourage anybody to. <laughs> right, right. It's, we have to remind them. More mandate. Right. Now it's reminding, you know, and, yeah. you know, yeah. but, uh, and then let's talk about that challenge. What, what do you do when you're faced against the challenge of the bankable actor yeah. that will bring the financing to an independent film or a studio film versus who might be better suited creatively? I mean, how do you handle those conversations? Well, I mean, it's kind of a reality we have to deal with. I mean, it's, and I understand someone is putting up a lot of money for a film. They like to get at least some sense that they're gonna get their money back and maybe make some money. So I, I, I understand that. You know, I think all of that isn't always guaranteed, but I, it's, it's just, I understand people wanting that comfort, you know? So you just try to maybe balance the known, the, give them the, the, well, this is the unknown version. This is the, the known version. And if something happens, maybe 
you get your lead in this role and maybe you can slip in someone less known who's great in this other, this other role. But I mean, it's just the reality of the business that we, we work in. On some projects, it's a lot more like, no, we need, you know, that and you, we need, uh, it's not like a Chinese menu, but it's just like, <clears throat> You know, they, they want bankable people in all these roles. If it's a big franchise movie, they want, you know. They want. They, that's what they I'm want. Talking. Yeah, and it's, you just have to sort of deal with that. And like I said, maybe try to slip in something a little surprising along the way in some of the other parts. But, you know, it's a reality we have to deal with. Right, right. Uh, you've worked on a bunch of films by the same director yeah. or producer. And uh, can you talk a little bit specifically about what those collaborations and relationships are like and what they were like from the first time you worked with yeah. he or she versus now the fifth time or, you know, and what those, and how your relationship between a casting director and a director grows and changes. I guess uh, maybe you develop a little more of a shorthand as you work with people more and more. Um, and, you know, with, like with Ed Zwick, it's like he's like my brother. It's like we argue a lot. And so it's sort of almost like it's become some sort of a familial relationship, uh, but it, it, in a great sort of joking way, but we, we, I think feel familiar enough with each other to like get on each other's nerves uh, and be fine with the fact that we're getting on each other's nerves. That's gonna be okay. And I'm not gonna be thrown out of the, out of the room or something. Um, with someone like Quentin, it's just, we had a shorthand immediately uh, just cause we had similar cultural references, similar film references, similar memories of television shows we looked at. And so we had, we got, we got along very, very quickly. Right, right. Um, and, and is it different now working with Quentin than it was? Just as yeah. more, just more, we just laugh a lot, we laugh a lot more, and you know, just, right. uh, it's more relaxed, more comfortable, just, you know, more intimate in, in, in a way. And, but it was pretty close from the, from, from the get-go. And, you know, look, sometimes you have relationships with directors burning and you work with them. And sometimes, you know, people feel like they want to just try something different or, you know, it's, you know, just, yeah, and, yeah. and and it could, you know, you kind of, you have to watch that you don't sort of take it personally or, you know, get hurt by it. Sometimes those three films you did with someone, they want to go and do something else with somebody else. And it's, you just have to learn how to navigate that emotionally, you know, but. Um, that comes so, with age, right? I think it comes <laughs> with age, yes. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, that's a little tricky too, because yeah, you don't, sometimes right. you don't do the five movies together. Sometimes you do the two or sometimes you right. do the, right. the, the three, but yeah, yeah. But what I, something I find when you do, when you are lucky enough to repeat and mm. totally, I agree with you, you understand they work with different actors. They work with different yeah. designers and locations. Yeah. Why not a different casting director? But yeah. when, when we are lucky enough to repeat, there's such a sense of, you know, it's such a hard process falling in love with actors and making that final decision. Yeah. You know, yes, that's who I'm going to put in my movie. I mean, we know they're always, that's always the most vulnerable for the directors when they finally have to commit. It's yeah. so nice when you have that trust with, as a casting director with that director that, like you said, shorthand, or when yeah. you can go, oh, I know that your taste, I know what you like. Yeah. Trust me about this actor more than you may or may be seeing right now in this audition. And yeah. I love when that trust is there. You know? Yeah, and it's okay to actually, for them to ask, for them to say, okay, really, do you think, <laughs> I mean, for them to really kind of look at you and go, no, believe that they can do it. They, they can yeah. do it. And, yeah. You know, so that's, uh, yeah, they're they're vulnerable. Yeah. yeah they're, sure. Because they've got a lot yeah. on the line too, you know, just trying to, they don't want to make a mistake. And casting, I think, is a huge part of, the success of a movie creatively, especially creatively, you know, so, yeah. And I've also found the more we do this, right? It's always, it's really one of the first things yeah. that the director is doing, is committing to, is yeah. actively doing. 
Yep. You, know, you know what I mean? And yeah. yet they're finding their way, no matter yeah. how much personal prep they might have done. So yeah. it's a little bit like, I know they're not consciously thinking this, but I always think it's like, well, if we make a decision of who we're going to cast, then we're going to have to actually go to the next step, which is start making the movie. <laughs> exactly, which is scary, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a director. We, we started casting the movie. They were scared because they, they were jumping into some controversial territory. And I'd gone to New York uh, and they were going to come and meet me to meet a couple of actors. And he called me and says, I can't, I can't do it. I can't. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't ready yet. And I went, it's okay. I, I think I kind of got it. I, I knew that there's some, it wasn't prima donna behavior. It was just, right. there was, I said, I went, that's okay. We're gonna, we'll just figure this out later. I'll tell these people, you'll meet them at another time. You know, but they were really, yeah, in terms of the, that vulnerability of, an, of a director, you know, making those casting decisions. I mean, you're right. Now you're committed. You're in the movie. You're, right. you're making it. Right. And that was, yeah, that was interesting. That was, it was a lesson in uh, empathy, you know? I mean, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about what you look for in an audition. What are the nuances or what makes a great audition for you for, you know, when you see an actor? Oh, wow. Um, how would you answer that question, Bert? How would I answer? <laughs> You know, I, I always, you know, obviously we have a sense of what we believe the, you know, what the director is looking for. We know what yeah. their vision is. So yeah. we have that sense of, do they fit what it is that we've been told that yeah. we need? But I think for me, it's someone that just walks into that room and makes me feel something in whatever short time I'm in the yeah. room. I mean, it's, yeah. I know that sounds corny for me, but it's, it's like, oh, did I feel something having heard this 65 times or two times? Was there something that made me, because I feel like I'm always racing. Like, I know what we need. I know yeah. what you're not. Yeah. But it's like, it feels like all time stops for that half a yeah. second because of something that the actor was doing. And they and they just moved me. And that yeah, I think I think maybe people don't realize that what we do is we may hear, hear something 62 times or <laughs> we we'll read a scene and nothing rises above. It's just all sort of like this. And you're right. At that moment when someone comes in and gives it, yeah, it makes you feel something or actually makes the dialogue work in a different way than anybody else had. It's like, that is that moment, that sort of aha moment or uh, yeah. The moment that makes you go, oh shit! Uh -huh. I think uh, I think we, we this part is actually going to work, and there's somebody who could actually play this part. Even right. though I've looked at a hundred other people, and you gotten depressed because it, nothing seems to be working, and, and then, not anybody's no. getting a bad reading. It's not that they're all right. like bad. Not at all. It's just that nothing is sort of rising above, and yeah, when someone comes in, and it's like, oh shoot, oh oh, that's it. Yeah, it's exciting. It's yeah, very yeah. exciting. And I, and I don't think you can kind of define the nuance exactly. Right, right, it's, absolutely. It depends on each particular part or, yeah. What are some of the places that you look for new talent or was there a specific role of a movie you were working on where you, you know, had to go out of the box to find someone that would be a fun thing for the students to hear about? Oh. Of, you know, like that Detective Thomas <laughs> you know, like where you had to go outside of the norm to maybe find someone or just generally, where do you like to look for new talent? Yeah, just wherever, wherever it may be. I did a movie called A Family Thing years ago with Robert Duvall and uh, we were looking for an older black woman to play or were like the lead role, a black matriarch. And I'd been in Texas years before working on a film and I'd met this woman, Irma P. Hall, and she just seemed to be great. And she just, you know, was mainly in Texas and did, you know, parts that, in movies that were based in, in Texas and uh, hadn't really done anything big outside of films that were shooting there. And we lost an actress that was gonna play this part, someone more famous, appropriate or whatever, 
in, in that sort of way. And I just went, Irma P. Hall. She's in Dallas, Texas. She's like doing a play at the whatever. And um, I mean, it's her. She came in and booked it. And so I guess that's an example, maybe just not necessarily someone from outside a box, but sure, sure, so, sure. you know, someone who wouldn't have normally gotten that part. Yeah, that's the right, sure. And um, uh, but in, I mean, look, I think it also it depends what sort of movies we're doing, Bernie, in terms of uh, how much you're able to go outside of a box in a certain way. There's some films that lend themselves to you know, you have to find a short, you know, a little person, I mean, whatever, whatever the specific little whatever it is. yeah thing you is. Just, it's and all it's of a sudden fun. you put on the detective hat and you exactly. start looking. You know? Exactly, and it's fun to enter that world. Yeah. I'm looking for a deaf kid right now, you know, right, wow. and it's just like, a, it's fun to sort of be an explorer in that world and really try to find, whether it's through deaf societies or wherever, um, find someone who could, who could, who could make that, uh, who could do that part. So um, I'll try to figure out a story of someone outside the box that I've cast before. Oh, that's to. all right. Are there any well-known actors today but when they weren't well known or when they were yeah. just starting out in the business that they came in and auditioned for you for a certain project, but then you now watched years later, oh my God, now they're an Oscar nominee. You know, are there any sort of, you know. Yeah. You know, Don Cheadle who, who came in, I think like in 80, late eighties, he played a soda fountain jerk in a low budget movie for me. Oh my God, uh, I love that. Yeah. yeah, when he first started, I think he was at CalArts but he just started, he did a day, soda fountain jerk, uh, you know. Um, uh, I mean, I just remember like Catherine Keener just auditioning all the time and never getting the part. Uh. You know, but you would always bring her in. Years later, <laughs> she said to me, she said, I just want to thank you for always bringing me in. I never got anything. I just want to thank you for bringing me back. Uh, but you figure these people, you know, Bernie, you, they're good. Yeah. You bring them back in, yeah. something's going to hit, you know? Um, but yeah, I think Don is a soda fountain jerk. I mean, look, Gary Oldman was cast in Sid and Nancy. He was, we had London and U.S. casting. He was, casting, he was cast out of London. And I remember seeing him for the first time arriving at JFK in New York to start work on Sid and Nancy. And there's just like this little guy leaning against the wall and the most unassuming guy, and, and it was like, that, that's, I mean, you would never guess he would be Gary Oldman, but he was just very unassuming, his first big role. And um, yeah, he became what he <sighs> became. I mean, Vigo, you know, was, used to hang out with Vigo. In Santa Monica would do like a small part in, in a movie called Roadside Profits. And, you know, it's, I don't know, you see them sort of take off. No, I know. You know in. The Vigo story reminds me of, I was casting an off-Broadway production for Ivo van Hove, mm. who's a wonderful uh, European director, but he was doing his version of Streetcar. Ah. And this was way before he was doing movies, but Vigo came in yeah. and it was like, you know, New York guy. And it was like, oh my God, the most amazing Stanley audition. Wow. And, you know, then we offer it to him. And then of course, like in the next minute, one of you LA casting directors sat him <laughs> up and he became a movie star. And I don't think he even, he's never been back to the stage, but it was like, damn, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. but it happens, you know, we all watch it happen. It's so great when it happens. It really is. And he, he, was, you know? he was sort of the reluctant movie star. He was- Yeah, um, totally. Probably we still really, is, I don't know. But. We had to kind of really talk to him to come and read on Crimson Tide. Wow. You know, and he came in because it just what you know, he's he, he he marches to his own drumbeat, you know, and this was sort of a Jerry Bruckheimer commercial movie, you know, you know, it's and you're trying to you know, no, come on in and do it. It's like Con Air, John Cusack and Steve Buscemi were all independent film guys. And you say, Oh, well, come on for this Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> See, they, you know, they they had a certain and it, I love Jerry, he's a great producer, but it had a certain sort of Hollywood commercial right. sheen that they were not usually in. And uh, 
to watch him sort of do one of those movies and actually like come out the better for it. I mean, it helped them continue to do the independent things they wanted to do and also do open up maybe an audience for them. So mm -hmm. yeah. how have you felt in these in the last few, I was gonna say months, but it's really, I guess almost two years, yeah. casting virtually. How has that affected what are the pros and the cons? Well the pros are you can see many more people. I know a shorter amount of time. So that's kind of great, but I and from anywhere, <laughs> from, from anywhere. And you also sort of see a certain sort of screen. Magnetism. Yeah, magnetism is maybe the, the, the wrong word, but does somebody is somebody able to hold the screen a little bit? But then, you know, look, it's it's been frustrating for directors I work with. They want to be in a room with an actor and see them in the flesh and work with them. And so in that sense, I miss the other thing, but I don't think it's going to go back. Just because there is a convenience to it. That's my fear. I mean, it's gone back in the theater. I do some theater, of course, and yeah. that's been in person. Yeah. Uh, but I do feel like the film and TV was already leaning towards, you know, yes. not in person, that now the convenience for some are outweighing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I miss being in the room with actors. I, I miss yeah. it so much. Yeah, I've done a few in in person things. It's usually such a such a bit, you know, to do the test and thing and blah blah blah. blah. But um, it's just really good to be in a room with them. But I realize it's just not going to go back completely to the way it was. So we just have to put singing in every movie because that's been our way. <laughs> like we're doing the Wicked film, but because we're doing the musicals, it's like we have to do them in person. Oh, uh, that's good. You can't sing virtually, so it's like. <laughs> that's not right, telling that's anyone. Right. Put a song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah. So most of your theater things are you're 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 doing in person. Yeah, I mean the pre-screens are on virtual. Yeah, you know, just yeah. one of us. But the themes, the things with the teams are all in person. I remember before before uh, we shut down, <laughs> like a couple weeks before we shut down, so, someone was saying to me, "Well, you know, so and so does all their pre-reads." you know, with self tapes, and then they pick from those who they want to come in and read in person. I went, really? I went, oh, huh, that's kind of good. Cause I would do all the pre-screens. I would- Me too. You know, I would do them all. And I was going, but something in my head went, oh, that's kind of great. <laughs> and little did I know that that was what was gonna be sort of forced on us in the next, uh, the next uh, few months, so, yeah. Uh, before we get to some of the questions, from our film aid students in Kenya, I, I would love to ask the question of, what would you tell someone who said, I wanna go into casting and they're just getting out of school and whether there's a job or not, what would you say to someone who's interested in casting? Um, I think I would sort of encourage it. And uh, I, would, I would wanna know why. <laughs> You know, uh -oh. don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> really? First of all, um, no, I, you know, our job is a little like, you know, psychologist. It's a little, it's, it's recognizing talent. It's, it's a lot of different components. And uh, um, as long as people are sort of ready for that, I, th I sometimes, I don't, not sure people really know what being in casting means. Right, you sure. Know? Um, so I'd probably ask them what they thought it was, what they like, what they think they might like about it, and uh, hopefully encourage encourage someone who really seemed to have a passion for actors. Um, yeah, but I think I I don't think it's a closed off I don't think it's a closed off uh, job, you know. And I I think there's so much. I said a young person they can do now before even having that job. Mm. You know, they live in the world of the internet, you know, start mm -hmm. taking notes of every film or TV or yeah. theater thing that they saw. Yeah. yeah. To hone in on their taste. You yeah, know, like people exactly. ask me, well, what is taste? It's like, well, go see something and start talking out loud or talking to yourself about what you thought of those performances and yeah. 
who stood out, even if it was the, you know, the one line part. And I, I often tell, I think of, of a sense of film history and theater history, you know, just the great performances, the great actors. I always tell actors, just go look at great actors, whether they're from the, you know, the 90s, the 80s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, they're great actors. I said, ad adopt an actor and just look at all their movies and sort of get to know what great screen acting could 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 be like. Um, I love so, that, adopt an actor. It's a yeah. great one. Yeah. It's a great one. Yeah. And, you know, I love that suggestion too of watching it in order. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. You know what I mean? And you yeah. see, I mean, a, a friend of mine did it. Yes, it sounded like fun. They watched every Meryl Streep movie from the first one to the last. Mm -hmm. But they really came at it from a sense of watching the growth. I mean, exactly. yes, she's brilliant on day one, but yes. it's just that's a really great way to learn exactly. by watching how they change, how they grow. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. You know? No, I think it's a great profession. And I feel like our profession has gotten more visibility, more recognition. Yeah. And it's a place to make a living. You know, that I think it is. And, and yeah. I think it's, I think it's, I mean, I really do think it's one of, I think it's all creative positions on, on the making of a film or a theater piece, you know, but it's, you really can impact something. Right. Uh, right. And, 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 and in a big way. Yeah. And, and that's nerve wracking too. I get, I, I, I feel the burden you know, in a way. And I just, oh my God, what are we going to do? You know, but it's, uh, you can really have an impact. I'm going to ask some of the, we had some really good questions from our uh, Kenya Film Aid students, if, if you have a few extra minutes. Sure. Uh, great. Uh, how long does it take you to cast or get the right actor in the right role? <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> that is the question, I right? I worked on something for three months and we still hadn't found the right person. And that's really sort of nerve wracking. So it depends. Sometimes you get in there the first couple of weeks, you know, with me or the, you know, you kind of think you know who it is. And yeah, three weeks later, four weeks, yeah, that's who it was. But uh, I, I literally worked on something where three, three months in, I mean, actually it was longer than that. We didn't have anybody. It was very nerve wracking. And so it just depends. It just depends. Right, right. I always feel like there's one role that's, the bane of your existence. Yeah. yeah, the bane of your existence. Yeah, yeah. there's just always one role. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, in your experience, uh, obviously maybe they don't know this or do know the students, we do have casting contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you feel like you would wanna add to, you know, is there something that is not there now that you would want there in a casting contract? Residuals. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Let's I, call uh, three ninety nine and eight seventeen. <laughs> I, I mean, I cast the the original Power, and that's gone off into like eight spinoffs or whatever. <laughs> and I would love to have like had a anyway, <laughs> and, and, and sh shared in that success in, in a in a in a longer longer way. But let's not talk about all that in a contract. Um, wow. Yeah, but that's a good one. <laughs> that's a, yeah, yeah, a good one. Yeah, or bonuses. <laughs> something, something where you share in the, you know, the right. Uh, the success. One of the students' questions was, if you're trying to land a star for mm -hmm. a lead role. Mm -hmm. What is your approach? How do you approach that specifically differently than just casting a movie when you know you have to land a star? How do you go about that? Well, hopefully you have a director and a script that will appeal um, to that star. Um, wow, it's uh, a star. 
through any means necessary. I mean, through, right. you know, I mean, right. that's really, it's like you call, call the manager. Okay. Let me, let me call him and tell him this is coming, you know, just any way you can get something to uh, make it rise above the rest of the script. Someone's, you know, someone's being sent. Um, yeah. That's a hard, that's a hard one to sort of, uh, maybe the approach is a little more delicate. Yeah. Because we all of a sudden, depending on the level of the director in the script, we become salespeople. Yes. You know, and we're trying to, I would say, first off, try to get the agent or manager to read the script. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. in hopes of having a conversation about yes. that actor for this director. Yeah. 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 No, we are the salespeople, Bernie. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, yeah. 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 Uh, when you have to work on a project where you know you're going to have to look for people who have who don't have a lot of experience yeah. in acting, you know, like a lot of young people just starting out, is there something you look for differently? How do you handle knowing that you're not going to have a cast with a lot of experience? And is that okay? One of them wanted to know. Yeah, I think Hopefully you look for someone, even if they're not that experienced, who seems to get better with each audition. They seem to like have a natural instinct for it. They seem to, outside of what you're telling them to do, they make decisions about what to do as that character that makes you kind of sit up. It's like, oh, okay, they're thinking. You know, they're not just repeating, just repeating the lines or repeating, uh, going down a, down an avenue that I, I may suggest to them. They're actually taking their own accord and, oh, they're coming up with something on their own. Right. So that's, I said, oh, okay, well, that's, that's interesting. Um, and hopefully, I think maybe what we try to do with inexperienced people is maybe surround them with someone who's a little more experienced. You know, if you can put someone who's uh, maybe have an actor who knows a little bit more, been around a little bit more, they can be around that person's a little less experienced. It's just they can kind of, it's, it's a good influence on them. So I wonder, was this question someone who was trying to figure out how to, how to, how to make a movie knowing that they're going to be using inexperienced actors and how, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? I think it was probably, it might've been from one of the acting students, you know, oh, what's wow. it like auditioning actors who lack experience or, you know, how do you help that? I think it was maybe, yeah. From, but I'm not sure if it was an acting student or yeah. a directing student. I'm pretty sensitive to that in, in, a, in a room. I know there are people who are inexperienced and they don't quite know where to sit or what, to, or, you know, how to do it or what you just try to help them in just the, the, the act of having to audition. Yeah. Um, okay. Which is, yeah, that's, that's a learning curve. Yeah. And it's reminding them that so much of acting is listening. That's a you big, know, they get in the room and they start doing, that's and big, you know, so much of film acting is listening, right? The camera's on them and they're not the ones speaking. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's trying to help them be grounded enough yes. to be still enough to just listen to what is being said. And, and I think something that you said too, Bernie, before is trying to be just like a, a, a kind person in the room, you know, so they're not facing, you know, just so that they feel like they have a little bit of support. Yeah. In a room I and mean, just try to be there. It doesn't do us any good to like not to make the actors comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, you know, I'm, a, you know, as much as I love what we do and I know you do too it still always surprises and amazes me that how this is how people get jobs, they, you know, <laughs> through the action of auditioning, you know, cause it's yeah. so filled with so much tension, hope, fear. Yeah. You know, whatever we can do to help relax it. Yeah. Be in that moment. And I think the repetitive nature of it, I think doing it over and over and over and over again is gonna help inexperienced actors. And right. it's just something you have to do again and again. Yeah. Uh, one more question I think from them is, 
Uh, what is it like working with a first time director? You know, it's it depends who the first time director is obviously. Uh, huh, Let's I say think. it's a director right out of school, you know what I mean? Or the, yeah. their first feature. And you love the script and you've decided to cast it. Yeah. I got, I think you have to be there sort of teaching a certain, well, that's, yeah, that's, that's a whole other, that, that, that's a whole other thing. It's, um, <laughs> you know, you're there to guide them, you know, just to guide them and hopefully say, you just, you're just there to guide them. It's just a little bit more of a hands-on, you know, there is not necessarily a shorthand uh, and they may not necessarily have gone through a casting process. So you really sort of have to say, no, you can, you actually can talk to the actor. You can actually ask them to do it again. You can, you know, so it's really guiding them through the whole process of, of casting. And some will have more of a natural, it's like a duck to water. They'll, they'll get into it and, 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 and be, and be better at it sooner than others. And yeah, it's just, you're, you're their guide and teacher and yeah. yeah. That reminds me, did you have a mentor or anyone that guided you through your career or at one time in your career? No, you know, I've, I've learned a lot from people who've worked with, with me. I've learned a lot from Jeannie McCarthy. I've learned a lot from uh, um, directors I've worked with, um, from Frears. Um, just watching them, watching him, Stephen Frears, make, just see people and make decisions and just, this is, I've, I've learned a lot. It's interesting how directors come to who they want for a role. I, it's, I've tried to pay attention to that. Uh, Quentin, I mean, just li looking at, at him. Uh, Frears is interesting because he's just, it's, it's, it's amorphous sort of. I really admire him as a, as a director as, and as a director of actors. And it's, uh, I don't quite know how he does it, what he, I just try to look, listen to how he makes decisions. Then later I'll ask him, oh, okay, okay. It's just interesting coming, someone, some come from like a feeling from a, it's just, it's just, interesting. I've learned a lot from the directors I've worked with. Yeah, sure. Do you have a, uh... I won't call it a favorite, but is there a movie in your repertoire that you've worked on that was just the experience of casting that movie was special for such and such reason? Whether it was an actor, director, you know what I mean? It's not about favorites, like yeah. give a little, tell us about a specific story of a film that just to this day, you still remember love. I think Ed Wood was a really just great from start to finish. Uh, I, I mean, it was working with Tim Burton, who's. Oh my God, I forgot you did that movie. <laughs> that so it's, good. Um, it was about sort of LA, it was set in LA. It was just as a production, just a pleasure to work on. Uh, great people who, you know, Sarah Jessica hadn't done a million things, and all, all these people that were in it playing small parts. And it was just a really great, um, that was a really fun experience. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that felt very personal. That felt very, very personal. Cause I'm oh from God, LA. All those, all those small parts in Hollywood were so amazing. It was like, you just kept wanting to go, oh my God, who is that? Oh my God, that was her? You know what I mean? <laughs> I remember watching that. It was like, <laughs> oh, it's so good. And just said it was said, and you know, I would go see movies up on Hollywood Boulevard when I was growing up. I mean, it's just, and I remember reading about those murders and my, my kitchen table with my mom and my dad. It was just, and and the cultural references within the movie, you know, the TV shows within it. So anyway, so that was that was also something sort of personal, even though I didn't know those people. I didn't, you know, uh, that that was great. That was great. Wow. Uh, all right, I have a last question for you. Uh, if you were starting all over again, casting from like the day one, is there something you wish you knew that you don't know or that you would do differently? 
I wish I knew that I was pretty good at it <laughs> at an earlier time and not been insecure. Because the way I started, I was actually hiring people to assist me who had more experience than I did. And I felt a little guilty about that. And uh, I wish I just not felt that insecurity and trusted that I was pretty wow. good at it and don't don't beat yourself up. Right. That's beautiful, actually. Uh, there's I still feel like there's so much we can learn. You know, I mean, that's what I love about the job too, because we're yeah. always learning. Yeah. yeah. You know? And if it's just learning a new actor, yeah. You know, it reminds me that, oh yeah, I do have to keep learning. Yeah, I don't feel like I know it all. I don't, you know, right. I don't feel that way at all. You know, and I feel like I have to be reminded to, I have to ref, just remind myself that, you know, yeah, there's also, there's always something new to learn and yeah. Right. yeah. And any final advice you give to our students who wanna go into, who wanna be a casting director or wanna be an actor or a director? To say just, you know, have faith, know your craft, um, always just always feed yourself, just feed yourself. Um, you know, like I said, with film history, but also just live life um, and observe life and just travel outside of your, your little circle and um, experience the world as much as you can and use that experience uh, in whatever craft you choose. That's beautiful. Thank you, Vicki. Oh my God, it was so great to get to hear your story and how you started in this business. And uh, this was so nice. I feel like I know you a different way now. Uh, so I thank hope you. It was, hope it was helpful or enlightening in some sort of way. And I wanna thank all of our students for participating in the Academy Visiting Arts film series Film Aid Edition for casting directors.